today, I'm going to be taking you beyond the basics that we covered in the previous Advanced Custom Fields and Elementor Pro video, and we're going to take a look at how we can start creating our own custom post types and creating a custom WordPress loop to output additional custom data. Well, if this is something that interests you, then join me as I take you through doing all of that right now. My name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew. We notified every time new content is added. Okay, so let's just jump over now into the dashboard of WordPress and take a look at what we're going to create today. This is where we left off in the first video in this series. We've got the archive page that shows us the vehicles, and if we click to go and take a look, we can see all the dedicated information, the custom fields that we've added to those vehicle posts. Now, this is pretty basic the way we did this in the first video, and it was a good introduction to what meta fields are and how we can use those with the default WordPress setup. So in other words, we're using this inside the post type. Now, what we want to do in this video is take it to the next level where we start to introduce our own custom post types. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would I want to create a custom post type? We're going to easily just go through and add in custom fields to the normal post type in WordPress. And if you have a very basic website with just a single topic, for example, you could be doing recipes, then that would probably work quite well. However, when you want to move beyond that and you may have multiple different kinds of categories, you may have cars, you may have lorries, you may have all right manner of different kinds of post types. It starts to get just a little bit unwieldy when you try to shoehorn all of those into a typical post. So it's much better to use custom post types. And that's what we're going to do. So now that we've talked about what custom post types are, how do we go about actually creating our own custom post types with the website we're working on? Well, one of the nice things about WordPress is with the repository of all these plugins, there are tons of options available. And today we're going to be using a free plugin called Custom Post Type UI or CPT UI. So what we're going to do is I've come into the plugin section, come into Add New, and we're going to simply going to search for Custom Post Type UI. And there we go. There's our plugin. So we're going to click on Install now. Let that download and install. Once that's finished installing, we'll activate it and we'll have a new entry then inside our WordPress dashboard. So let's activate that. Once that's activated, if we take a look on the left hand side in our dashboard, we'll see we now have CPT UI. So this is going to give you an overview of what's available in the latest version. And as of recording this video, you can see version 1.71 is the latest version. So what do we actually start doing to use these custom post types? When we take a look on the left hand side underneath the CPT UI section, you can see we have a range of different options we can choose from. We've got add edit post type, add edit taxonomy, register types and taxes, tools, help and support and about CPT UI, which is what we're currently looking at. Now, for this video, we're only going to concentrate on the first two options. The first half of this video, we're going to take a look at custom post types. And then later on, we're going to take a look at taxonomies and explain what they are and how we can use those to better organize the custom post type content we're going to create. So let's start off with the add edit post types. Once we choose add edit post types, it brings us over into this dialog box, into this section. And as you can see, in much the same way as we had with advanced custom fields in the previous video, we've got things broken down into various different component parts. What we're going to take a look at today are the key things that you need to do. I'm not going to cover everything inside here because they are, as you can see, a heck of a lot of options. So let's start off at the top with the very first section, the basic section. So what we have in here is the post type slug the plural label, the singular label, and auto-populate labels. So what we're going to do, first of all, is give this a slug. Now, we're going to be dealing with vehicles. So we're going to just type in vehicles. Once you've done that, most important thing to remember here is whenever you're dealing with a slug, you need to make sure that you don't use spaces, capitals are ignored, and if you want to put a space in to separate something, you need to use either an underscore or the minus sign to create that separation. Next up, we have the plural label. So we're going to just type in vehicles inside there, and then the singular label is going to be vehicle. Now, these are primarily really used for the dashboard. They don't really get used on the front end of the site too much. So don't worry too much about what you use on there. This is what you're going to see on this left hand section when we actually have our new custom post type added in. So we could, if we wanted to leave it there and we could add this post type and we'd have the very basic setup. However, there are still a couple of things that I want to go through and show you and a couple of settings that I want to change to make sure this works the way that we need it to. So let's scroll down to the additional labels section. Now the additional labels are completely optional. 
These are the kinds of things that are used inside the dashboard when you're going through and creating or adding in your custom posts. So in this example, the vehicles and so on. So you can see we've got post type description. So if you want to, if you have a more complex dashboard or you need to explain to the end user what this particular custom post type is for, you can drop in a description there. Then we have things like the menu name, all items, add new, and so on. These are ways of going through and not using the default values that WordPress will assign to your custom post type. So if you want to fine tune and tweak these, you can do. They're all pretty self-explanatory and you can't do any harm by adding in any values in there. You can simply come back in, edit your post type and delete any of the values you don't want. What we do want to look at though are the settings section. You can see we've got quite a lot of options available to us inside you. And this might look really daunting if you've never seen this before. But the nice thing with this is there's a lot of these options you don't need to make any changes to whatsoever. So if you're unsure, you can test it out. You can see if it does what you want it to or expect it to. If it does, then you can leave it. If you want to set it back, you can simply come in and edit your post type. Nothing you do inside here when you set up your custom post types is irreversible. You can simply come in and change anything you want. So we want to do things like we want this to be public. We want it to be queryable. So in other words, if we apply a search filter later on, we want this to be something that can be searched against. And also things like show UI, show nav names and so on. So you could see we could delete this with the user. We don't want to do something like that, but the options there if you wanted to. What we want to change though are a couple of different values. So we say has archive. Now at the moment this is set to false and the problem with that is if we leave that set as false we won't have an archive available to us to display the vehicles. We don't have control over that especially when we're working with the theme builder inside Elementor Pro. So we need to make sure that in, in this example if you want to create your custom archives that you set that to be true. Next up you can see we've got exclude from search. We're going to leave that as is. The capability type. Now, as you know, or you should know, whenever you're working with WordPress, straight out of the box, you've got a couple of different sort of types of post types. You've got posts, you've got pages, you've got media and so on. So what you can do is you can set the capability and it will take those basic capabilities from that post type inside WordPress and assign that to your default values inside your new custom post type. Might sound a little complicated, but for most examples, you're going to leave that set as post because we are creating a custom post type, not a custom page or a custom media or anything like that. So we're going to leave that value set to post. Then we've got hierarchical. Now, hierarchical basically means can we structure this in hierarchy? So, for example, can we have parent and child values? So we may say we wanted to put vehicles in. And that would be the parent. And underneath that, we could then break it down into child components, which could be things like motorbikes, cars, lorries, vans, and so on. So there's a hierarchy in there. Depending upon the kind of information you're putting in and your custom post type you're creating, this may be something you want to set to false or to true. Entirely up to you. We're going to say we want to set this to true so we could expand it if we wanted to in the future. We're going to use most of the default values for everything else. We're going to come down there and you can see it says show in menu. We want to make sure this shows up in our menu on the left hand side. And we can say what position do we want this to be placed in? So if we set that to position one, what will happen is that will put that right at the top of our options on the left hand side. So you can position that where you want. And you can see we've got a range from five to a hundred or whatever you kind of want to do. Show in menu, that means will it show it in this new section at the top where you've got inside the dashboard where you can go in and say new post, new media, new page and so on. And also if you have this value, this bar available to the user on the front end, it will also be available inside there. I'm going to leave that set to true even though I don't really use it myself personally. Then we've got the menu icon and what we can do is we can use dash icons to create a custom icon and use that inside the dashboard to separate our different custom post types. By default you'll have this little pin but you can if you want to use the dash icons and use those completely free of charge to give yourself a little bit more of a unique kind of look. If we click on dash icons you can see that'll take us over and you can see we can now go through and search on here for anything we want so if we were looking for cars or vehicles or anything we can find an icon we think is relevant to us and then we can utilize that inside our dashboard so let's just say we like the look of this one this little speedometer all we need to do is take this value dash icons performance we'll copy that from there come back over into our custom post type and we're simply going to paste that value inside there that now allows us to use that if we wanted to we could choose an image icon so we could click on anything we've uploaded previously we could use that as well if we wanted to
Next up, we've got the supports option. Now, when we covered in the advanced custom fields portion of this, the first video, I took you through and showed you we can use default tools or default functions inside our post type editor as part of WordPress. And those included things like the title, the editor, the featured image, and so on. The same works with our custom post types. So we're going to leave title, editor, and featured image selected because we want to use those as part of our new post type. And then we want to add on extra fields on top of it. So we're going to leave those values as they are. Then when I come down, you can see we've got custom supports, which we're going to leave those completely empty. And then taxonomy. So if we wanted to, we could associate any of the built-in taxonomies that's part of WordPress with this new custom post type. For this example, we don't want to utilize those. We're simply going to keep it to all the things that we've set up. Just making sure that everything is in place. And then we're going to click on add post type. And then what you're going to find is if we take a look on the left hand side, we now have a new entry called vehicles. And if we click into all vehicles, that will show us what we'd normally expect to see, which is a list of the vehicles in our custom post type. So we've created our custom post type all ready to start assigning or changing over the custom field values that we want to assign to this particular post type. So we take a look now at our new custom post type. We'll see that it basically is a very, very simple post type. We've got three things we can do. We've got the vehicle name, the description or the details and the featured image. So the key things you'd normally expect to see inside any kind of post type with WordPress. So the next thing we need to do is create or assign our custom fields. So we're going to come to the custom field section. We're going to take a look at our field groups. Now, instead of going through and recreating all these again, we've already covered that in the first video, so I'm not going to go over the old ground. What I am going to do is come into these details and we're going to reassign these to a different location. So where we previously set those up to be part of just a normal post type, you can see there's our location. Post type is equal to post. We're going to change that. This is one of the nice things about working with tools like advanced custom fields. You can test things out, make sure they work the way you want, and then you can add other things in, and then you can reassign where you want to use those particular field groups. So what we're going to do it says post type is equal to post. We just need to change that now to be used with our new custom post type. This is super easy. Post type is equal to, and we just change from post and we come down and we choose vehicle because that's our new custom post type. So now everything else can be left intact. All the settings are exactly the same. So all we're going to do is update this. And when that's updated, we're simply going to come back over into our vehicle section, come down, we'll choose add new. And from there, you can now see that all those details that we created in the previous video inside advanced custom fields are all now available to us inside our new custom post type. So let's go ahead and just create our first vehicle just so we can see how the whole process works. So we're just going to call this TT Roadster. So it's a different name to the first one. So you drop in some text inside there, choose a featured image. We'll just choose the TT image set as our featured image. Vehicle manufacturer, we're going to say it's Audi. Vehicle color is red. Petrol type is perfectly fine. And we're going to say that's the specifications for it. So let's just add that in a second time there. So we've got a little bit more text. So we've put everything we need now into our new custom post type. We can hit publish on there. And then we've now got our first post type all set underneath our vehicles. So really straightforward thing to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a couple more vehicles and then I'm going to take you on to the next stage. There we go. I've now added an extra vehicle in this. We've got a couple of vehicles to work with as we're going through and fleshing out this particular video. So we've seen how to create our custom post type and how to assign custom fields to it. This is perfectly fine if you want to create a fairly simplistic setup. However, when you want to get a little bit more sort of structured, it makes a lot more sense to start adding in some way of grouping your content together. Whether that's based upon something like the fuel type or it could be something like the manufacturer. It could be any number of different things in any number of different scenarios. But we need to have a way of to group things together just to structure our information a lot more logically for both ourselves and for the end user that's visiting our site. Well, custom post type UI gives us another option we can use to do just that. Now, if you're used to working with post types inside WordPress, you're probably used to dealing with things like categories and tags. Now, these are called taxonomies. And taxonomies are just ways of grouping your posts, whether that's a custom post type or a normal post type inside WordPress itself, how we can group those together into logical groupings. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the custom post type UI again. This time we're going to choose add edit taxonomy. 
So once we do that, that'll open up the taxonomies option and you can see there are some things that are the same as when we create a post type, but there's also some things that are gonna be different. So we're gonna create a first taxonomy. Now you can create as many of these as you want to logically group and order your information. I just wanna show you one, but the routine procedure is exactly the same if you wanna do it again and again and again. So let's kick this off by putting the taxonomy slug in. And this again works in exactly the same way as when you are creating a custom post type, no spaces, no capital letters. So this one is going to be grouping our cars or our vehicles by manufacturer. Next up, the plural label. So we're just going to drop in manufacturer and add the S on there and then manufacturer for the singular. So we've created our taxonomy. We've given it the plural and the singular labels. Next thing we've got then is attached to post type. And if you remember back when I said we were creating our custom post type, we could, if we wanted to, associate that custom post type with some of the built-in taxonomies that we have as part of WordPress. This allows you to do the same kind of thing, or we can now attach it to the post type that we want to associate it with, which in our example, the vehicles. So you can see we've got things like posts, pages, media, and so on, and they've got WP core in parenthesis. And that basically means that's WordPress core functionality, not something we've created or not something that's part of a third party plugin like Elemental Pro, which gives us my templates. So we want to use vehicles. We're going to add that in there. So we now say we've associated that with our custom post type of vehicles. It knows where we're going to use that. Next up, we've got the additional labels, and this works in fundamentally exactly the same way as what we had when we create our custom post types. So again, if you want to put values in there, you can do. If you want to leave them as they are, that's also perfectly fine. Next up, we have the settings section. And again, we need to make some changes in here to make sure that it works in the way that we want it to. You can read through these. It gives you information about each one. And again, if you make a change and it doesn't do what you expect it to, you can come back in and edit your taxonomy and change any values that you set up. What we want to do, though, is we want to set again to hierarchical. So we're going to say true for that. And we're going to come down and we're just going to make sure everything else is set the way we want. So it says rewrite hierarchical, show admin column, and so on. So we're going to say we want to rewrite the hierarchical. We also want to show admin column. Now, this is a nice little feature that if you look at where we created a vehicle, first of all, all we had was the title and the date that we created it, which is OK, but it doesn't really give us a lot of information. However, when we create our custom taxonomies, we can specify that that's going to be shown inside the dashboard of the admin for our custom post type. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So we're going to say we want to set this to true. Once we've done that, we can come down and make any changes we want inside here. You can see we've got show in quick bulk edit panel. Again, this is one of those things that's very, very useful. And I'll show you what that does once we've created our taxonomy. So we're going to set that value to true as well. And then we're just going to say add taxonomy. Now, once we've done that, because we've associated this with our vehicles custom post type, if we come out to vehicles in the top left hand corner, you see we now have a new option called manufacturers. However, if we go to posts, we don't see that in there. The same for pages or media or anything else is only associated with our custom post type of vehicles. So let's just jump in and take a look at all vehicles a moment. Now, you can see we've got what we had previously, which was the title, the name of the vehicle, and the date it was added. But we now have manufacturers inserted in there because we specified we wanted that to be inside the dashboard, inside our admin. We also have the option, if we come in and take a look at the quick edit and open that up, we have the option inside there for manufacturers. Now, currently, we don't have any manufacturers to choose from, but when we do, we can associate those with any of our posts. So it's a nice, quick way of being able to bulk edit or update anything you want by adding that into your dashboard. OK, so now that we've created that taxonomy and we've set up all the settings that we want, let's take a look at actually adding in some values. So what we need to do is come out to manufacturers. We can click on there. We can now add in some manufacturers. So we know we've got a Ford in there. We know we've got an Audi in there. So let's just say add a new Ford. We'll add Audi, there we go. And we'll add one more, we'll just say BMW, and we'll add that. So we've now got some values. So if we come back out to our vehicles and say all vehicles, if we wanted to, we could now select these vehicles. We can come to bulk actions and say edit and apply. And now we have the manufacturers as an option inside there. So if we wanted to, we could bulk edit things on here. 
However, because we only have two vehicles, it's not going to work for us in this instance. But what we can do is we're just going to come into the Focus ST. We'll click inside there. And now if we take a look on the right hand side, we've got our new taxonomy section for manufacturers. So that basically means that this section for vehicle manufacture is no longer actually needed. So what we can do is we can get rid of that. First of all, let's simply go through and say that this is a Ford. So we're going to select that and update. And then we'll do exactly the same thing for our Audi. And we'll just choose Audi from there and hit update. So we've now created a taxonomy and we've done away with the need for this vehicle manufacturer. So what we can do now is simply come to the custom fields into our field groups, open up our vehicle details. And from there, we can now scroll down and find any values that we don't want. So we've got the vehicle manufacturer is no longer needed. So we can simply delete that from there and say, yep, we want to get rid of it. We'll update that now. Come back to our vehicles and take a look at all our vehicles and just open up one of those to edit it. And you'll now see that we no longer have that value inside there because we started to organize our data in a much more logical fashion using our taxonomies. So now that we've created a custom post type, the template we created in the previous video is now pretty much useless to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that and we're going to create a new template specific to our vehicle post type. So let's come to our templates and come down to our theme builder. Once we're inside there, you can see we've got default archive. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that. So we're just going to delete that and drop it into the bin. And we're going to create a new one. So we're going to say add new. From there, we're going to choose an archive. And then we're going to call this default vehicle archive. Okay, so we're going to say create our template and we can go through the same process that we had the first time. But the difference is we're going to set up a different condition for how we're going to display this information. So what we're going to do is going to close this down and we're simply going to drop in and create our own custom archive. So let's drag our archive widget over, drop that on there, and we're simply going to come in and add a little bit of space above and below, just so we've got a bit of breathing room. And as you can see, it says, well, we can't find what you're looking for. And the reason being is, is because it's looking for just a default post type inside WordPress. Now, I've already gone ahead and deleted the vehicles we created in the previous video that were just part of the normal posts inside WordPress. So we now need to tell it what we want to use and what we want to display. So first thing we're going to do is come into the little settings cog in the bottom left hand corner of Elementor. Click on there and then we've got preview settings. Click on preview settings and you can see it says recent posts. What we want to do is come down and choose a vehicle's archive. Now, it knows because we've created this new custom post type and we've assigned it to have archives inside the custom post type UI settings, it allows us to actually use that as a reference to display data. So we're going to choose a vehicle's archive, hit apply and preview. And after a second or two, we should find there's our new vehicles that we've added in or pulled in from our custom post type. So we've now created those. We've pulled that information in. So all looking pretty good. And as we did in the previous video, we can come in and fine tune and tweak the various different parameters, the design and so on. So we can say we can do all those kinds of things and that's looking perfectly fine. I'll leave that as is. We're going to hit publish. That's going to take us back into our add conditions option. And this time we're going to set a different condition to what we did in the first example in the previous video. Add condition and it says all archives, which is not what we wanted to do. Now you could use this if you didn't intend to have any other kind of custom post types. You could have just signed this template to every single archive that may ever be used inside your design. However, if you were dealing with multiple different custom post types, each of those post types may need to have a different archive design. But we can do that inside Elementor Pro's theme builder. All we need to do where it says all archives is click on there and you can see because we've created that vehicle archive, we now have additional options specific to the vehicle's archive. Before we only had post archive. Now we can use the vehicle archive. So what we're going to do is we're going to say vehicle archive. That's what we want to do. We're going to use that and we're going to set that up to be the right kind of condition for this. We're going to say save and close. We've now created our custom archive with a template or design that's specific to that custom post type. I hope that makes sense. Once we've done that, we now have finished with that section. So we can simply come out of this, exit to our dashboard, and we've now created our archive page. So let's take a look at this in action. So to make this easy to find, what we're going to do is we're going to come out of this, exit to our dashboard, and we're going to come into our appearance section and come down to menus. And here we're going to create a new menu item specific for the template or the archive template we've just created. To do that, all we need to do is come to custom links, Inside here, we're going to get rid of all this and we're just simply going to put in vehicles with a forward slash at the beginning and the end. And next, we're going to say view vehicles. 
Now let me explain where we get this information from. Why do we know, or how do we know that the URL is vehicles? Well, let's come back over to our custom taxonomies and we created our custom post type and we named it with the post slug vehicles, as you can see here. So that slug is the unique link to go to that particular post type and use the archive that we just created. With that in place, we're gonna say add to menu, let that add that in there and save our menu. Then we can jump over to our test site and take a look. So let's come over to our test site. We'll visit our site and we take a look at the top. There's view vehicles. We're gonna click on there and that'll take us through and there's our new custom archive using the design we've just set up, all created using custom post types and custom taxonomies and so on. If we click and go and take a look inside there. We've now still got that default kind of layout, which isn't what we necessarily want. So we need to change that and rectify that. Now, because we'd already created this single post template that displays all of that custom post data, we can reference that quite easily. So what we can do is we can come back into our template section, into our theme builder, and from there, we're gonna go into our default single template again. So we're gonna go in, edit with Elementor, and once we're inside there, all we really need to do is change where it pulls the data from. So all the information is ready for us, all the template layout is there ready for us. What we need to do is come down to the save options, click on there, and we can update our display conditions. Click on display conditions, and from there we can now go through and choose what we want to use to display this data. Now by default, we see we've got the previous settings, which is to include posts and all of them, which isn't what we want. So what we need to do is choose the first option, and from there, you can see we've got vehicles, which is our custom post type. We're going to say vehicles, and then we're going to leave that set to all. So this is now going to use any of the data pulled from our vehicles custom post type and display that. Hit save and close. Once we've done that, we can simply exit out of this, exit to our dashboard. When we've done that, we can come back over to our test site. We come back in and view, visit our site. We'll come in and view our vehicles. There's our new custom archive page. And if we click and take a look at our TT, we'll go in and you can see there's the data that we wanted all pulled in ready for us. So everything is looking the way we'd expect it to. We haven't had to go back in and create everything. But if you were doing this from scratch, I'd highly recommend you take a look at the first video where I go over through exactly how you set all these details up to display everything that you want to. Now, if we come back to our archive page and take a look at this, it doesn't really do any justice to what we're creating. In other words, we've got the vehicle picture, the name of it, and then some description information, but it doesn't tell us any more than that. You've got to click to go into the actual vehicle details and see exactly what's available. So for example, the things like the color, the engine, and any other information we want to create as part of our meta fields. Well, there's got to be a better way of doing that. And there is. However, we can't do that with Elementor Pro alone. We need to have another plugin. Now this is a free plugin again, so it gives us the ability to go in and create custom loops. Now before we jump in and take a look at what that plugin is, let me just explain what we're going to be doing. If we take a look at this screen in front of us, the archive, we are effectively using the WordPress loop. Now, if you consider the loop to just be, to repeat information on screen and loop it set number of times per page. So let's just say you set up WordPress to have nine vehicles per page, and then you'll go to the next page for another nine and so on. That's displaying the loop. Now, each one of these individual items is part of that loop. So what we are going to create is we're going to create one of these individual items. We're going to create the template to display that. Then we're going to utilize that inside the WordPress loop to repeat it. So it's just going to replace the look of this with the data that we want to pull in. And that's all it's really doing. So don't worry too much about the technical aspects behind it. So when I'm talking about the WordPress loop, that's what I'm talking about, where it just repeats those entries one after another a set number of times for each individual page. Okay, so let's come back over into our dashboard. We're going to come back into our plugin section. We're going to come down to add new. From there, we're going to do a search for Ellie Custom Skin. Now, there is a pro version of this available, but you don't need that to do what we're going to cover in this particular video. So once we found that, you can see Element of Custom Skin, we're going to install that. Once that's installed, we can now go through and take a look at how we can start to use it. So let's activate that. And as you can see, it's got over 10,000 active installs and a five-star rating. So it is a great plugin. And like I say, the free version does more than we needed to. So get rid of any of these nag messages on there. And we're going to do, going to come back into our templates, into our theme builder. 
and you'll see we now have a new entry called loop. So we now can create those templates that we use as part of our custom loop. Click to come into the loop option and you can see in the same way we'd expect with any of the templates inside Elementor Pro, we're going to say add new. From there, we're going to give this a name. We're going to call this default vehicle loop. We'll click to create our template and then we'll go into the normal Elementor editor. We haven't any templates selected for this, so we're going to just close that down. So we're going to now start creating the various different aspects. You can see we've got the single post icons available to us on the left hand side. So we can start to use those if we want to and pull in the various little pieces of data that we've got as part of a typical post. Let's create our first loop then. First thing I'm going to do is come down to our settings section and from there I'm going to change this template. Now even though it won't use this, we just want to get rid of it just to make sure that we don't have any distractions when we're creating things. So at the moment page layout is set to default. We're going to set this to element or canvas to get rid of that header and footer. Once we've done that, come to the preview settings and you can see we can pull in what dynamic data do we want to use. I'm going to click on there, we're going to just choose vehicle and all is perfectly fine. So we'll say apply and preview and that will then give us the ability to now use the actual data from one of our vehicles when we're building out this layout. So there's our vehicle already inserted in there for us. We can change any of the values we want to on here. So you've got the image size and so on. So we can set the alignment on there, change the image size. We'll set that to medium large because we don't need it to be sort of full width. That's going to be a little bit too big and also slow down the page load. The link, we're going to set this. We want this to go through and take you through to the vehicle. So all we need to do is click on link. We say custom URL. And from there, we can click on the dynamic icon. Now, if you remember back to the previous video where we took a look at ACF and how we can start using dynamic data, this just opens up the opportunity to start using various different features inside either advanced custom fields or WordPress itself and use those where we need them to. So for this, we're going to say we want this to go through to the post URL. So that means if we click it, it'll take you through and you can view the vehicle. Next, let's come back out of this and we're going to say we want to put in the actual post title so we can say what vehicle it is. Click on there. See, TT Roadster, we'll change that to a smaller heading. And if we want to, we can come in and easily style this then any way that we want to, just to make sure that everything sits nice and neat and tidy in our design. And we'll just say uppercase, there we go. So what we can do now is we can simply pull in anything that we want to. So let's say we want to do something like pull in the manufacturer. Now the manufacturer, if you remember, isn't part of the custom post type. It's its own separate taxonomy. So how do we reference that? Well, we can do exactly that. We're going to just drag and drop in this text editor field. Now you can use any of the other fields. You can use headings if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. It all comes down to just how you want to format that data afterwards. Click on dynamic and in there, we've got a lot of different options. What we want to choose is post terms. So going to click on there. That now just pulls in the ability to use a post term, but we've got to tell Elementor what we want to use, what post term it is we want to use. Click on the little wrench icon, and from there you can see we've got taxonomy. Click and expand. We've got the default ones you'd expect with WordPress, categories and tags. We also have manufacturers, which is the custom taxonomy that we've created. So we're going to click on that, and you can see that immediately pulls in Audi. Can come down to advanced, and we're just going to put in before manufacturer, and we'll put a full column and a space, and we can now see that we've pulled in that relevant data. So that's pretty cool. Now there's another thing that we have that's part of this LE custom skin. It's a new option we have when you use that and you have that installed. Normally, if you try to add in an excerpt, you either have the option for post excerpt, which is, as you would expect, the custom or the meta field that you have as part of a post type, which is post excerpt. So it's another field that you'd have to fill out. It's not always the best way of doing things. However, let's just pull in this text editor again, drop that in there, come back over and choose dynamic, and you'll see we have a new entry called post summary. This is specific to Elementor custom skin. And what this will do is, in the same way you'd expect it to when you create a normal post and you use the normal archive loop, you'll have a brief section underneath that'll pull it from the description of your post. This is doing exactly the same thing, but it now works alongside our custom post types. So with that in place, we can come up the style tab. We can set any values we want inside there, the content, all those kinds of things. And if we expand this out, you can see we have the option for the number of characters or words that we want to use. And again, we also have advanced. So we could say if we wanted to, we could put in, we'll just print a little bit of HTML code and we'll say description. 
full colon and we'll just close that HTML code down just so it makes that little bit more bold at the beginning so you can see now it makes a bit more sense so that looks pretty good i like the look of that and then finally what we could do is we can if we wanted to come back out of this and say we wanted to drop in a button into there so we just scroll down find a button drop that underneath there and what we can do is now we can start using dynamic data on here as well so we could if we wanted to change the text from there and use anything from here so let's just say we want to pull in the details of the name of the car the the, the actual vehicle itself so we're going to do let's say post title and you see it says tt roadster click on the little wrench icon and come down to the before and after and we can just put in view for a space and after space and then details so we now have a custom button that will pull in the dynamic information from the post title and sit in between the words view and details. So it makes a much more sort of obvious button as to what's going on. Next up, we need to put a link in there. And what we're going to do is going to click on the dynamic option again. And we're just going to say post URL in exactly the same way we did with the vehicle picture. OK, so we've now created our basics of this particular loop item, this template for the loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit update on there. Save and close because we don't want to apply any conditions to it. We've now created that. We can now go through and tell it where to use it. So we're going to come out of this, exit to our dashboard, and we're going to come back into our theme builder. Once we're inside our theme builder, we're going to go back into our default vehicle archive. Edit that with Elementor. Now, you'll remember when we created this, we just used the normal archive widget which is, again, like I say, perfectly fine, but it uses only a couple of different layouts that are predefined and we have no control. However, just selecting that now, look under the skin section and click and open that up. We now have a fourth option called custom. If we choose the custom option, that'll open up a range of different options that are only available when you have Elementor custom skin installed. So the first thing we have is select the default template. In other words, select the template we've just created that we want to use. Click. There's our default vehicle loop. Click on there and you see that now pulls in the design that we've just created. Now the options underneath are for the pro version. So you can see they're all locked. We can't actually access those. So if you want those, you're going to have to go for the pro version. However, like I say, you don't need it. You can use it as it is and it'll still do a fantastic job of allowing you to create a custom loop template. You can choose the number of columns you want. You can set this to be two if you wanted to, three, four, whatever you kind of want on there. But this gives us a lot more option. As you can see, we now have a template that's used inside our custom archive loop, which gives us the ability to pull in any data that we want, style it any way we want, and then make it a much more unique layout. So now if we jump over to our test page, you can see there's our layout, there's our custom loop. You can see we can click on the image to go through to the vehicle details, or we can click on the button to go through to the vehicle details as well. Now, when you use custom post type UI alongside Elementor custom skin and advanced custom fields and Elementor Pro, you have an incredibly powerful platform to be able to develop and build much more unique WordPress websites without relying upon additional plugins on top of that to do various different things. It just gives you a great solid foundation to be able to do a lot more with WordPress. Well, there we go. That's how we can take advanced custom fields, Elementor Pro, and some other tools and start to create way more advanced WordPress websites. Hopefully this video, along with the previous one, has whet your appetite to the kinds of things you can do with this fantastic combination of tools. The best part is it opens up more opportunities for you to make more money if you're looking to do this commercially. Well, as always, all the links are in the description below for everything we've covered in this video. And if you'd like to get any comments, questions or feedback out there, drop those in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation started and tell me how you can see yourself using these tools in the future. Well, as always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.